contrary to popular reports, I'm not dead. I'm not dead. I almost died. I don't know if you guys remember, but last week on Monday and Tuesday's videos, which were my last ones I made, I was kind of sick. And then like a day later, the flu took me out. New York is peaking right now. The Knicks are fucking back, baby. Want to know? First time winning a game one on the road in the playoffs in like 30 years or some shit like that. This is how I know New York is back. New York is so fucking back that even Bagel Pub is hitting this shit correctly. I don't know if you could see that. This is what happens when the Knicks win. When the Knicks win, people respect your bagel sandwich. And I don't even know why I'm calling it a bagel sandwich. I got it on a fucking roll. I couldn't imagine getting a bacon, egg, and cheese, preferably on a bagel over a roll. You guys are twisted. So I was real sick the last week or so. So I'm still trying to take it easy a little bit. Still a little bit sick. I went through like days of, um, of different symptoms. Like each day was like I was unlocking a new level of hell. It was so odd. It felt just like COVID. Wasn't COVID. Tested a bunch of times. But day one was like crazy body and muscle cramps and then day two like my throat was on fire and then day three my head felt like it was a balloon that was about to pop at any moment you know and it started getting a little bit better and better i just started to treat myself like a plant i would just go outside and soak in sunlight it was just like water sun water sun it made me think about how we're just you know at the end of the day we're just little peasants on this floating rock or whatever people say fuck this shit all right dame brugler one of my favorite analysts as it relates to the NFL draft dropped a seven round mock draft on the athletic yesterday. Well, he actually dropped it today as I am filming this, but for you guys, it'll be yesterday. And since the athletic is a paid platform, uh, I'm not going to throw everything up on the screen and just give you what's behind their paywall for free. So you can go check it out. But I wanted to just mention quickly some of the more noticeable picks that are relevant to fantasy and your dynasty rookie drafts, of course, go over some of the things that I noticed, uh, any of the big sweeping changes that we've seen over the last couple weeks that I think would be relevant to y'all. So y'all know what we got to do next. So first thing to notice, um, there are no trades in this mock draft whatsoever. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Do whatever you want with that. I'll link the article down below. It's going to take you to a paywall, though, if you're not already signed up for The Athletic. I'm pretty sure you could sign up for like a dollar a month. Very much worth it if you're even any sort of level of uh, sports fan. Dane's work speaks for itself. So we've seen a, a little swap a a switcheroo of who's going number one at the quarterback position. And I came on here last week or a couple weeks ago saying that I guarantee CJ Stroud would be the number one overall pick but cj stroud's going to be the number one pick in the nfl draft i would put i would put everything i own i'll put this hat on the line i'll put my dinner roll shirt on the line i'll put it all if you think otherwise i would love to make a side bet with you but cj stroud's going to be the number one pick overall in the draft i don't remember what i put on the line but whatever it is is happening because bryce young is going to be the number one pick all right i'll i'll swallow my tongue and i'll swallow this fucking sandwich okay <clears throat> Bryce Young goes one, CJ Stroud goes two. So we've kind of just flipped the script there. And I still think this is the time of the year where we start hearing a lot of crazy reports and rumors about how now the Texans don't actually even want a quarterback. Like, of course, why would you want a quarterback? Why would the number two overall pick would you want a quarterback in a class with two really good quarterbacks when you have Davis Mills, right? Why would you want that? So you start hearing all these like ridiculous rumors and reports like Atlanta is going to take B. John Robinson at number eight. Whatever I said for C.J. Stroud not going number one, whatever I put on the line, I'm going to put that on the line with the Atlanta Falcons. Falcons are not taking B. John Robinson at number eight. We need a pass rusher. We need a pass rusher like, like I need a cure for the fucking flu right now. Those two go one and two. Now, I do think there's an argument to be made that Carolina takes Bryce Young at one. Does he become the QB one in Superflex rookie drafts, right? Or do you like C.J. Stroud more? I like the Houston setup more for Stroud, at least in the immediate future. They've got more weapons, I think. Carolina has a nice offensive line. Like, they've been building up their O-line. It's one of the better parts of their, probably the only good part of their offense, pretty much right now. Uh, I think you can make the case for either one of them. Just a couple picks later, we have Anthony Richardson going to Indy at number four. Now, he'll, you know, he'll, he'll be ready to compete pretty quickly uh, in Indy because they don't have a quarterback situation going on there, and they obviously need someone to step in immediately. And it seems like there's a pretty clear differentiator here of tiers, right? Like you have Young and Stroud together. You have Anthony Richardson seems to be the QB3 in his own tier. And then Will Levis as QB4 in his own tier. 
Now, he goes in this draft at the number 11 spot to the Tennessee Titans, which is a pick that's starting to gain, gain a little bit of steam. I could see that because they'll probably ride Ryan Tannehill one more year. I don't think they believe in Malik Willis whatsoever right now. Tannehill will be probably gone after this year. Uh, so it would make sense that if they like Will Levis and if he falls all the way down to number 11 here, uh, that pick would make a ton of sense because it's not like you're not really risking a ton of draft capital at the number 11. Like Once you're out of top 10 picks, it's difficult to, I, I know, you're going to fucking say 19 good, really good quarterbacks are picked outside of the top 10, but it's obviously riskier the prospect the deeper you get into the first round. So at number 11, like sure, you could take a top cornerback, sure, you could take an offensive lineman or whatever, but to hit on your quarterback – when you don't need a top five pick or whatever, where Will Levis was, you know, projected to be a top five guy just a month ago, that would be um, an interesting landing spot. Bijan drops to the 16th pick to Washington here, uh, which is fine. Again, there's not many spots that I'm not going to like Bijan in. Antonio Gibson is there. Brian Robinson coming off of a good rookie year. Uh, those guys obviously become super fucking irrelevant. And I guess it's maybe speaking to the fact that they don't really want to put the ball in the hands of Sam Howell or Jacoby Brissett at QB. And they say, you know, it would be like, you know, under new ownership, assuming that they sell before the draft. I don't really know how, what the timeline for, you know, selling the franchise is. It would give them like a renewed uh, excitement and a, a renewed, you know, just uh, offensive outlook here in Washington that I feel like they do need. So this pick makes a little bit of sense from like a high level common sense standpoint, honestly. But there are probably other spots I, I, like it more for Bijan to land in. But he goes to Washington at 16. He's obviously the RB1 off the board. The wide receiver one off the board is all the way down at pick 20, the Seattle Seahawks. They take Jackson Smith and Jigba, which I think is a cool compliment to what they have at wide receiver right now with DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, both outside guys, both separators, and then you have JSN running in the slot. Would give them a ton of three wide receiver set looks. Uh, would probably turn them into a really explosive offense really quickly, right? Like you have those three guys. You have Kenneth Walker. Geno Smith played great last year, of course. Um, so give him another weapon, and then whatever quarterback they have in the future going forward gets interesting. What did they do at number five? They took Tyree Wilson, the edge out of Texas Tech. So, you know, some people have talked about how they might grab a quarterback of the future after Geno Smith there, if it's Anthony Richardson or Will Levis or whatever. Uh, they did not do that in this draft class. But we have three offensive picks in a row. We had JSN as a wide receiver one to Seattle at 20. Dalton Kincaid, the tight end one, to the Chargers at 21. I love that spot. Obviously, the Chargers need some sort of like explosiveness in their offense. Now, he's not like the fastest tight end, but definitely the best pass catching tight end in this class. And I think this gives them, I would love this. I think Kincaid and Justin Herbert would be a fucking match made in heaven. Uh, Kincaid would be, you know, a, a borderline first round rookie pick here, um, if not like solidified into the top. 10, 11, 12 bots there. Right after him, Zay Flowers goes to the Baltimore Ravens, the second wide receiver off the board. Uh, Zay Flowers, just the hype train is crazy. Saw a clip the other day of like his agent on a podcast being like, oh yeah, it's well known that Zay Flowers is going to be the first wide receiver off the board. He's like Antonio Brown, but better. He will be the first wide receiver drafted. Well, did. Everybody in like the league knows. It's just like, it's hard for the media members who have to support like the big schools, the big programs who donate them all this money. So like they have to keep running the racket, but like in the league, they already know that like Zay is the first receiver off the board. I'm like, man, how do you expect like anyone to take you seriously with shit like that? Agents, I don't think they know how dumb they sound sometimes. A couple spots later, we have the Giants at 20 five taking Addison the Cowboys at 26 taking Michael Mayer both really really good landing spots with a lot of opportunity to be had there Jordan Addison going to New York where they obviously need a real wide receiver one Dallas Cowboys lose Dalton Schultz and I think Michael Mayer I think Michael Mayer makes so much sense for Dallas's offense both from like a run blocking standpoint as well as someone who can fit in and like not overly explosive but the way that they treated Jason Witten for years and years and years and years obviously uh, Michael Mayer is like that again so some excitement in the first round uh, as we get to round two most of the same dudes that you kind of see mocked to the same places Quentin Johnson has now been falling down boards pretty significantly to the point where he's commonplace at the beginning of the second round Going to Houston. I just, I love this for Houston. Again, it's another pick that's not, that's low risk. You're getting Johnson somewhere that was like getting mocked top 15. He's now getting picked 33rd overall to Houston, pairing him with uh, CJ Stroud to be, you know, his wide receiver one or whoever you want to consider it to have, at least for year one, year two going forward on the rookie contract. Jameer Gibbs goes 34th overall. That's serious capital to the Arizona Cardinals. They are you know, flipping the script on everything out there in Arizona, it would be kind of an ugly rookie year because that offense, Arizona, I don't know if Kyler Murray is going to play at all this year. I would be pretty surprised if he played any sort of significant snaps. This might be the worst team 
in the NFL this year. They'll be competing for Caleb Williams next year. Absolutely. Um, so Jameer Gibbs, if he goes to Arizona, I don't want to think too hard about just like the talent, obviously, and the landing spot I've, opens up a lot of opportunity because he'll be probably second fiddle to James Conner, at least for year one. After that, though, um, it could be his backfield entirely. I just think that's an uphill climb to be a good offense. And when I look at dudes like, you know, you, you compare him to Alvin Kamara and stuff like that, and the reason guys like Kamara were so good for fantasy for so long were the mere like touchdown opportunities or the yeah the mere like fucking 17 touchdowns per per year he was scoring and the amount of receptions that he got and it's because the offense stays on the field often and gives these opportunities so don't love that landing spot but you do obviously love the capital um and then we talk about Seattle getting their quarterback of the future they didn't do it in round one but they get Hendon Hooker here at 37 and I think that would warrant a premium pick in rookie drafts early second round you know he's probably taking over right after Geno Smith. I think they're similar players. Good arms, strong arms, accurate quarterback who can absolutely move. So it's like a system going from one quarterback to the next and shouldn't hit a lot of hiccups on the way. Jalen Hyatt goes to New Orleans, Luke Musgrave to Green Bay, Josh Downs to New England. I love that fit. Um, I don't know. It's not going to be very fantasy relevant for him, but I think that's just finally New England like doing something good and taking a good player. Kind of sexy. Darnell Washington goes to Detroit at 48th overall. Uh, that's if, if he falls all the way down there, that's absolute fucking home run pick for Detroit because one, they need to fill the tight end spot that TJ Hawkinson left behind. And two, uh, Washington is obviously another offensive lineman. So if they want to just run the ball at a heavy pace again, like there you go. Tucker Craft goes to Jacksonville. Cedric Tillman goes to Buffalo at 59. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Cedric Tillman. I'm a huge fan of the bottom five picks here, at least three of the bottom five picks of the second round. It went Buffalo, 59th overall, Cedric Tillman, wide receiver out of Tennessee. The very next pick, Cincinnati, went Zach Charbonnet out of UCLA. If he goes second round draft capital, and we don't know what the fuck's going on with Joe Mixon, he's probably played his last snap in Cincinnati. Zach Charbonnet is going to go fucking bonkers ADP-wise. He's going to be like a fourth round, fifth round redraft pick. He's going to end up being like a top six, seven, eight, depending on scoring settings in your league, rookie pick. And then Tyler Scott goes with the last pick of the second round to the Kansas City Chiefs. And please, God, make this happen. Um, Tyler Scott would be a beautiful addition to KC, and he would easily get into my top 15 picks for Superflex rookie drafts. Um, all of my rankings, all of our rankings are up on bdge.co in the rookie draft guide, which is available to purchase right now. All of the player profilers, the rookie profiles will be updated immediately after the NFL draft. All of the rankings will be updated in real time as the draft happens. So if you have uh, a rookie draft that happens like the day after the draft or during or a week or two after, uh, we'll have everything updated in real time for you. So make sure you go cop that at bdge.co. That wraps up the second round. The third round, we get into a uh, territory where, you know, no one's like grabbing capital where they're going to be auto starters, but we do have some, a lot of interesting running backs coming off the board here at interesting spots. Devon A. Chain going to Denver is probably one of the least interesting spots, in my opinion, just because they have now Samaji P. Ryan, and I feel like they've added a bunch of these like random little rinky dink fucking running backs to their room, and then Jamonta Williams will be back eventually. So I don't see a lot of like long term upside for him. Uh, Sam Laporta going to the Raiders here. At the 70th overall pick, I kind of fuck with because Darren Waller's out. The running backs in this round, though, outside of A-Chain are interesting. You have Tajay Spears going to Houston, 73rd overall. So he would pair with Damian Pierce. I think that's just like a good backfield duo of good running backs. Still taking Damian Pierce over Tajay Spears, obviously, but that forms a committee, a committee with upside, I think, for both dudes. You obviously have like a completely revamped offense in this draft. They, they had C.J. Stroud, they had Quentin Johnson, and now Tajay Spears. Uh, Tank Bigsby goes to the Rams in the third round. Interesting because he's coming from Auburn, Cam Akers from Auburn. They have, they have similar skill sets, in my opinion. Tank Bigsby, not as good of an athlete overall as Cam Akers, but similar players, so I'm not really sure how that would shake it out. I'm assuming Cam Akers will get the first crack at everything this offseason, relevant to how he finished last year. Uh, Roshan Johnson goes to Tampa Bay. Don't love that landing spot. Could he be, I guess, like a Lenny fill-in? Um, should be Rashad White's backfield, but they have a whole lot of like shit going on over there, man. They got a big diaper to to, to clean up, and uh, I don't think Roshan Johnson is really good enough on his own as a running back to produce in a situation that is what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense is at this point. Kendra Miller goes to New York Giants. Obviously, Saquon's there, but he's on the tag, so maybe next year that opens it up for Miller to be uh, the guy, and then Izzy Banacanda goes to Philly, end of third round. Now, that 
is probably one of the more interesting landing spots in this mock draft for running backs because Sanders is obviously out the picture. They bring Rashad Penny in, but that's on like a million and a half dollar deal. Um, so Izzy, I, I think, adds a nice piece of explosiveness that, that um, they lost with leaving Miles Sanders out there in free agency. And I think he can kind of be, he's got similar size, similar athleticism, similar big playability to Miles Sanders. Um, so I think that was like a really, really sharp pick by... I mean, Philly didn't fucking do anything. It was Dan Brugler, but y'all got the point. So I like that. Wide receivers, we have Jonathan Mingo going to Tennessee. Jonathan Mingo continues to just climb up every mock draft that I've seen. We talked about him a little bit last week. Jonathan Mingo's is absolute fucking wildebeest from Old Miss, built like these other Old Miss wide receivers that we've seen come out over the last few years, right? DK Metcalf, AJ Brown, um, those guys. He can run. He's big. He can catch the ball down the field. Um, really, really interesting piece here. Marvin Mims goes to Indy. Not overly excited about that, but I guess you can pair it with Anthony Richardson and maybe there's something exciting there. Tank Tell goes to Minnesota. Jaden Reed goes to Carolina. That I really like because Jaden Reed goes to a situation that literally has like no wide receivers to throw the ball to. So I think he can earn opportunity quickly as a rookie. And then listen, once you get into, you know, the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round, I think fourth round capital is still like you have a shot to compete for a starting role at the NFL level, but obviously the uphill battle is is for sure there. So a lot of your favorite players that I didn't already name are sitting here. Uh, Xavier Hutchinson, Trey Palmer to Atlanta. Let's fucking go. Uh, Dwayne McBride, Eric Gray, Zach Evans down here at the end of the fourth round to Carolina. Chase Brown goes in the fifth round to Chicago. Kayshawn Booty, fifth round to Washington. Michael Wilson, fifth round to Detroit. Then we start getting to the sixth round. Sean Tucker to the Chiefs at the first pick of the sixth. That that is like the most Chiefs pick of all time, Sean Tucker, where it's like people are going to get so – like the new Darwin Thompson, where it's like I have no fucking allegiance to Sean Tucker. I could get, I don't give a fuck about Sean, but people love him. People love him, and then they would convince themselves that a sixth-round landing spot to Kansas City is a good – is like a good thing for him. We see it like every every single time the Chiefs draft a running back, regardless of what draft, it's almost like draft capital doesn't fucking matter if the landing spot is good, which is just, I don't know how many times we need to be proven that that's fake fucking news. Yeah, and then once you're, yeah, once you're in the sixth, seventh round, Parker Washington, my fucking guy, Keaton Mitchell, you're kind of left for dead. Stenson Bennett going to Baltimore. Ooh. Kenny McIntosh to New England. That's That makes a lot of sense. Chris Rodriguez to the Raiders. No one else that's super fantasy relevant down here. Yep. All right. Um, well, listen, we got the NFL draft next week. Starts Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I don't think we're going to be streaming for it. I will probably hop on other people's streams if I'm invited. So that means I'm probably not hopping on anyone's streams. But if I do, I'll let you know. So make sure you are following me on Twitter at Nick Ercolano. And make sure you got the notifications on for the channel because now that we are Bike with Underdog, we will be doing three best ball streams per week. Every week, we're going to be mocking, right? They won't overtake the normal content that we make. We'll still be doing our normal edited, well-produced videos during the daytime. And then at night, when the freaks come out, that's when the streams come out, all right? So make sure you got notifications on for the channel. Um, and we'll be doing more rookie mocks next week and then the week after, obviously, to cover you for your Dynasty rookie drafts. And then it's fucking redraft season, baby. We'll bike.